You've just got yourself a swanky new flight simulator and you've realised that controlling the aircraft with a keyboard and mouse is exceptionally difficult to do. You're on a budget and you want to know which peripherals to get first with recommendations. Well then you're in the right place because that's exactly what this video will give you. So wading straight in, number one on our list is a hands-on throttle and stick, or HOTAS. There are three reasons that this is our top pick. Number one, it allows control of the throttle and flight surfaces. These are the most important controls of the aircraft. Secondly, it's a very versatile. It can be used with lots of different aircraft, even those that have a yoke in the model. It can also be used with a range of simulators, including flight sims and space sims. And thirdly, there's a really wide range of these devices available to suit all budgets. For an entry-level device, we would recommend the Logitech X52. Elite Dangerous actually modelled their in-game flight stick on this device. It comes in at a very budget-friendly $150. If your budget can stretch to it, the Logitech X56 is a significant upgrade over the X52. It's got a wider base, split throttle, more buttons than you can shake a stick at, tension control on the throttle, and replaceable springs for different tension on the joystick. It rocks in at $250, and it's a significant upgrade over the X52. Watch out for inflated prices for both of these devices. The impact of the semiconductor shortage, as well as the pandemic, continues to impact availability and prices. And for those that have extraordinarily deep pockets and want the absolute best money can buy, we recommend one of the devices from the Verpal Controls range. They have all metal mechanisms, made to genuine flight stick standards, interchangeable and differing sticks. The price is significantly more, but so is the quality. Frankly, there's nothing better and it will last a lifetime. They also have a brilliant range of throttles available, but the lead times are extraordinarily long and the price is very high. Number two on our list is a flight yoke. And whilst this doesn't have a combat sim feel to it, the majority of general aviation aircraft have a yoke and throttle and mixture control. And whilst you can obviously control this with a HOTAS, you will significantly deepen your immersion with a yoke that looks and feels correct for the aircraft type that you're flying. Our entry level recommendation is the Logitech Pro Flight Yoke. It has a nice array of buttons, an LCD panel on the front, and includes a throttle for prop, pitch, and mixture control. It does feel a little bit cheap and doesn't have the full 180 degree rotation on the yoke that you would expect to find in a real aircraft. But for an entry level device at $140, it provides an instant and significant upgrade over a controller or keyboard. If you want something more robust and professional feeling, then the Honeycomb Alpha Yoke is worth a look. It's very robustly made. It has very little wobble and travel on the shaft with a really nice feeling yoke on the end of it. It does have the full 180 degree rotation that you would expect to find on an aircraft. Um, and that was missing on the Logitech device. And it also has a fantastic looking honeycomb pattern with a nice red backlight accenting it. It also includes a flight panel, including engine controls for startup and shutdown, buttons for the lighting. Uh, however, it is lacking a throttle. So you'll either have to pick up the Bravo throttle quadrant from Honeycomb or the Logitech throttle quadrant. There's an additional cost on top of the asking price. And this device is relatively expensive at $280 and availability is very poor. It's extraordinarily difficult to get hold of. Number three on our list is rudder pedals. This is easily the most overlooked peripheral and arguably not the most glamorous one for you to buy. And whilst you can set rudder control to automatic on most flight simulators, if you want an authentic flight sim experience and you want to learn how to properly balance your aircraft as well as controlling 
its movement on taxiways and making sure it stays aligned with the center line on the runway uh, to do things like slipping for accelerated descent as you're coming into land. You're definitely going to want to be able to control the rudder and the best way to do this is with a set of rudder pedals. Logitech have got a great device which features tension adjustment full rudder control as well as a brake control by pushing your toes down at the front. Make sure you get this device before you look at anything else further down our list. And number four is a virtual reality headset. There is no more immersive way to get into flight simming than to be actually sat within the cockpit, actually virtually sat within the cockpit. You'll need serious PC horsepower to make this viable. However, Microsoft did update Microsoft Flight Simulator recently, which has significantly improved the VR performance. Being able to look around whilst you're flying traffic patterns is frankly game changing, as is looking at the beautiful scenery as you cruise at high altitudes. It does mean that you can't use charts and other panels and plates, but it's an experience that's just got to be had. The Quest 2 from Oculus can be found for about $299 and you'll also have a standalone VR device that can also tether to your PC for PC based VR gaming. If you want the absolute best, you've got the PC horsepower to drive it and pockets deep enough to buy it, then our recommendation is the HP Reverb G2. This is simply the best SIM VR headset that you can get with a whopping resolution of 2160 by 2160 per eye. These work brilliantly with Microsoft Flight Simulator, DCS World, X-Plane 11 and Elite Dangerous. Four truly great and must-have sims. Number five on our list are flight panels. If you're going for uber realism, doing navigation between VORs, GPS flying and you're dialing in radio frequencies, perhaps you're flying with something like VATSIM, which provides real people providing the air traffic control. You'll soon learn that changing frequencies, adjusting controls within the flight sim with a mouse is extraordinarily frustrating and fiddly. Logitech have got a great range of panels which lets you control all of these, radio frequencies, navigation, put your gear up and down and more. It's also a great way to start thinking about doing a full cockpit build and you can buy these devices incrementally. You can keep the costs under control. They're typically anywhere between sort of $60 up to $100 and you can buy them incrementally, learn the panels and then move on to the next device. So what did you think about our list? Would you have bought things in a different order? Have you got any top picks or recommendations? Let us know down in the comments below. As always, I hope you're very well wherever in the world you are. Please like, share and subscribe and I will see you in my next one.